Well, hello everybody. It's good to see you again. Uh, it's been a few weeks since my last vlog just because I've been so busy. So I'm really sorry about that, but I'm going to try and squeeze as much as I can in over the next few months. It's really hard because I'm so busy. But anyway, it's good to get out again. And actually what I wanted to talk about today in today's vlog is I wanted to talk about something that happens to all of us as landscape photographers. And that is when you lose your mojo. And um, at the minute, the light's a bit flat. It's been flat for about a week or so. So it's sort of kind of a gray light. There's occasional bursts of light through the clouds but generally it's quite grey. The vegetation it's starting May so there is some spring grass coming through and things are starting to go green but actually the vegetation still looks a little flat. Um, we've not had much rain for a couple of weeks so the rivers are not very high so we've not got some massive waterfalls or anything like that. So I came out today and I thought I need to do a vlog and I'm struggling to find something to do. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and approach that and kind of let you know how I get back on the horse a little bit, how I find my mojo when I'm feeling a bit uninspired with landscape photography. So come and join us. We're going to go up to what's a place called Breckley. Then we're going to get a high looking over the mass, looking down Loch Leven. So come and join me. And let's see if I can find my mojo. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've come to the top end of Balahoolish, the village where I live, and there's a little track called Brecklet, it's Brecklet Path, and that takes you, it's about a mile walk, it takes you all the way around a circular route back down to the quarry, which is Balahoolish is famous for. But I'm not going to do that, I'm going to turn off at the top there, and I'm going to start heading up a bit high. And the plan is, is to get up onto the top there and get the mast, and then that'll allow me to look um, west for sunset. There is some breaks in the clouds, so potentially I might get some good sunset shots, a few light rays coming down that'd be brilliant I've got it all in my head um, so that's the plan is to get up there if I see anything on the way I'll do and stop and take a few snaps there and show you about them but what I'm trying to do is I'm feeling a bit under pressure because it's been a few weeks I need to get a video out for you guys and I don't want to just give anything that's a load of nonsense so I feel a bit under pressure at the minute and I kind of felt like let's just cut it all the way down again and keep it nice and simple and just head on out and see what I find and, and see how it works and if we get a sunset that's great and I'm trying to take that pressure off my shoulders a little bit um, because I feel sometimes when you do lots of good videos and you do some beautiful shots then you've got to kind of match that in your next video uh, and you kind of ratchet up until eventually you feel under pressure and I don't want to feel like that because I think you don't take as good photography so it's about enjoying it and about taking your time and slowing down a little bit so I think that's what I'm going to try and do I'm going to try and switch this take this pressure off my shoulders switch my head a little bit and try and find some inspiration in the landscape and you know what if I don't it's not a big deal it's about being out and having fun and I think that's the key when you start losing your mojo I mean, everybody goes through it when you start losing that inspiration to go out and do some landscapes just get your cameras get your bag have a wander around and see what happens and don't put any pressure on yourself it don't matter if you find nothing and occasionally you might go actually yeah that's really nice and then get inspired again cool okay so we're going to walk up through the forestry here uh, and then we'll go and see if we can find anything on the way up to the mast <laughs> So this Breckloop path, it does take you through the forest. The Forestry Commission look after it, they're really good. Um, but we've had some real big storms over the winter. Crikey, I don't know about you guys, but it's just been so windy this year. Uh, so it's been storm after storm. And uh, occasionally when we get these big storms come in, we get some of these big trees down. Look, we've got some here. So uh, we're gonna have to hop over those. And some of these trees are probably about, 
I don't know, that would be about 100 metres high at least, I reckon. So they're really long trees and I think the Forestry Commission, this is due to be forested because um, it's been planted trees. Um, but uh, the Forest Commission, I think they've decided to keep it like this just so the little trek can walk on through. So uh, that's quite good of them. And they do sort of keep a look at the footpath and make sure the trees are cut away. But this is a big beast. Look at this beauty behind me. So cool, when that went, it must have been quite some sight. Cool, okay, we're gonna hitch over these then and then carry on up. As you get halfway round the track, yeah, you come up to this little sort of farm building here. There's a little croft that used to be here before the trees were planted and it was worked on the land. In fact, I've probably got a picture of it in my visitor's centre, which I own where my gallery is. I'll show you a picture of that. Um, but that was uh, quite a few years ago and you can see it's gone into a bit of disrepair here. Um, there's some nice light coming through and I'm resisting the urge because some of the moss on the trees is beautiful. I'm resisting the urge to go to the trees. But I think this is quite a nice shot. Just further down is the buyer where they used to keep the sheep. So uh, there's some beautiful textures there. So let me go down there and have a look at that because I think with a bit of light coming through, which is potential here, actually quite a nice shot. So let me just go and have a quick look if there's anything here worth stopping for. Yeah, I've had a look at the barn. It's okay, it's just a bit flat at the minute. Um, some beautiful textures though, the big boulders of granite they've used to build them. So I've come back to the house, see if I've got anything from the house. I quite like the way this, this track kind of comes up and the light coming through is actually quite nice on the, on the back lit of the house. So uh, I think I'm going to wander around here and see if I can get a nice composition that works for me. The orientation at the minute, it's about five o'clock, it's, it's kind of early May, so it's about five o'clock in the afternoon and the light's just coming through the trees, it's fantastic. So I've kind of got these bits of shade and that just to give me some textures and give a bit of depth to this shot. I've got a wonderful leading line just coming down here. You can see this beautiful leading line of the track and that snakes its way around the corner. And the textures of the grass and the lichen and the moss on the uh, cottage itself just looks great, this sort of distressed look to it. So I'm going to kind of line myself up with the sun. I'm going to wait until there's a nice sort of big glary sun coming through, maybe some sun rays coming down. Now I'm going to have to bracket this because uh, it's quite a large dynamic range. So what I've done is I've put in three shots, uh, two stops apart, just to give me that big dynamic range. So I've bracketed it. Um, I'm not too worried about focus stacking because I'm actually going to focus on the cottage itself. And if the foreground right near the camera is a bit out of focus, so be it. I've cramped my eyes up because I've just gone handheld really here. So um, I've cramped my eyes up a little bit and it's given me about 120th of a second uh, at f8. So that's perfect for me. So I don't need a tripod for this little section. So uh, yeah, so let's wait for the light to come through. And I'm probably going to stitch these all together. And if this shot works, here's the image. Thank you. 
So after a little bit of up and down, you kind of get to a park bench and then you kind of carry on down here and you get to this kind of fork in the road. Now you can come up from Balahulish Quarry, which is probably a simpler route. You just miss out the cottages there. Uh, and then what you'll do is you'll get to this little section here and you'll see a little kind of deer fence with a gate that's fallen off. And uh, what you can do, there's a sign Brecklet going that way but obviously you don't want to go that we want to cut up here to the mast so make sure you go uh, left if you're coming up from the quarry before the the gate rather than afterwards excellent So just getting a bit higher up now and you start getting at the trees here. You can see the Loch Loch leaving in the distance there, the Balahulis Bridge and then Loch Linney. There's a little bit of interest in the sky. I'm a bit worried because it is hazing over a little bit, but just maybe some sunbeams coming down is good enough. And what I've actually done is I've brought my long lens here. So I've got my 200mm lens with me today. So even if I'm a bit high enough to zoom into the bridge or something like that, I still might get a decent shot. Now referring back to what this video is all about is kind of getting back on the horse and finding some inspiration. I've got a shot in the bag there, the light was fantastic at the cottages so I'm really pleased with that and I'm feeling a lot more positive now and a lot more confident so even if I don't get anything I'm, I'm feeling a bit happier just by getting out and it's one of those things whereby it kind of hangs over you, particularly when you're doing YouTube videos. And those that do YouTube videos will know that, oh, it's been a few weeks since I've posted. And it hangs over you like a cloud sometimes. And it's a case of just getting out and just doing it. And that's why I don't post very often. It's because I want to enjoy the process of doing videos. Uh, and it's quite nice and uh, I find it a bit therapeutic. So I don't want it to become a burden. So that's why I generally don't post every week. Because for me, it's all about just having a bit of fun. So, uh, so yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. So I would, my advice to you, when you get into that sort of lull, into that rut, it's probably best just to get out and do something. And even if it's rubbish, at least you've out, you've achieved something and that lifts your mood a little bit and allows you to get back on the horse. So what can only be described as a bit of a slog fest? It's a real steep section at the start of this climb and it goes for quite a while and I'm, I'm not far off from the top actually now but it's bloody steep. Um, just a word of warning, I mean we've not had much rain for weeks so it's actually quite dry here but I put my shoes on anyway, my boots on just because it can be a bit of a bog fest coming up here so just a word of warning. You get this high up and then everything starts opening out and you get these beautiful views of Loch Leven looking over down to Loch Liddy and the bridge of the Narrows, which is Balahulish Bridge there. And it's a wonderful location, actually. It's a really good shot for the village of Balahulish. And in my gallery, if you ever come up, come to the Balahulish Visitor Centre, that's my gallery, I own that. Um, so in there, I obviously sell fridge magnets of Balahulish, and I was right at this very spot. I took the shot for that, and I sell them in the box load. So, uh, so yeah, it's a really good location to get a little shot of the Balahulish village itself. Okay, um, got a bit hot, so the jacket's had to come off, but I've not got too far to go now. And as you can see, I've still got quite a long time. I've worked with 6.30 now, sunset is at nine. So I've got an hour and a half at, at least, even just to, to muckle about a little bit. But that's good. I think there's a potential here. There's a bit of cloud in the distance. It's a bit hazy, but you never know. Just that little break in the sky and a few rays coming down, that could make for a brilliant shot. Okay, no more dawdling, let's get on for the last little slog to the top.
yeah, so once you get to the mass and you come over, fork through the mass and then you kind of come over the peak a little bit and then you get this beautiful view just open up in front of you of Glencoe itself from a very unusual position. It's lovely, it really is. You look right down the heart of the Glen. Uh, it's really nice. Let me flip you around and I'll show you what I'm looking at. Um, so here we go. As I come around, look, there's the Glen itself. And as I come to, there's the pap of Glencoe. Looks going to have and then you've got sort of the Anakadu, Achnam Bay here uh, and there's the V at the Glen itself as well which is just spectacular and then as you go further to your right you're up that Glen Leknamui way and in fact that is Meal Moor there and I did a video there recently I didn't quite get to the top so I'll put you the video where I did actually get to the top and get the good views looking down the Glen itself uh, but it's a wonderful location now what that does though is it does put me in a bit of a quandary because the views are spectacular here. Um, so do I shoot it from this direction and get the River, uh, river Coe and Glencoe in it, backlit by the sun but he's going to dip behind me here? It's a bit of a risk because if it goes a bit flat then I've really not got a good shot at all. Or do I go back down the other way and kind of retrace my steps a bit? and uh, just look out so I've got the village of Balahulish and then looking down looking over the Loch Leven uh, and that way so I'm not sure what to do I think I'm probably just gonna have to look at what the lights doing so I'm gonna give it I've got about an hour and a half yet so I'm gonna give it about an hour or so have a look what's happening and then it might be a bit of a mad dash just to get the pink colours if you're gonna get coloured behind me cool it's just a waiting game now so let's see what happens yeah, so while I'm waiting, I'm sitting here for the sun and uh, this area here has been deforested a, a bit quite a while ago now, actually. And uh, what's happened is the little trunks, the tree trunks that have been left, um, are just kind of rotted a little bit. And there's got some beautiful light on. There's one right next to me to my left. And it's got some beautiful light on it. So I thought that was pretty good. So I thought that's be a nice composition. I'll flip you around and show you what I'm talking about. Um, so I've got this lovely composition down here to my left. Oh. Uh, let me come on down a bit there it is so there's that tree there you can see it's starting to go in shade now but the beautiful sort of rings and how it's weathered is lovely and i've got a lovely golden light that's guiding the eye up this little twig that's coming out of it as well guiding the eye up up until you see the uh, the actual uh, glen itself which is lovely and it's looking okay and there's some nice textures and, and stuff in the sky so it works quite well so I set up a little shot, I only handheld a quick little shot, basically just while I'm waiting for that sun. Um, but I quite like it and I'll see, I'll probably work on it, might darken it down a little bit and give it some character. But anyway, if you like this shot, here's this image. <laughs> Great view really, great view indeed, um, yeah really nice, I, I like the light on that as well, um, yeah a bit of a picture postcard shot but uh, still quite nice to give you an idea of the perspective and, and sort of where I am in terms of the rest of the Glen so for future reference but yeah quite nice. Okay what I am going to do is I've decided to go back over and go and shoot the sunset so I'm going to climb back over the sty, head myself back down to the other side of the hill towards Balahulish and then hopefully we'll get set up for a nice golden sunset. Okay, let's go. Okay, so what I've done is I've come quite a way down actually. The reason being is the land here, it goes kind of straight and then drops straight and then drops. And if you're at one of these flat sections, it kind of overlaps the foreground, overlaps everything. Um, you can't even see the lock in some places. So you kind of kind of get to the edge of it, of the lip where it drops over a little bit. So that's what I've done. I'll flip you around and show you what I'm sort of shooting here. So 
here's the, here's the lock itself. Obviously, I put the long lens on here. So I've got the 70 to 200. And what my target is, is I'm trying to get, this is the bridge here, the Balahulis Bridge. And I'm trying to put that in the foreground and then I'm hopefully get some beautiful light coming down there as well, fingers crossed. So that's the plan um, and I'm feeling quite happy. I think the composition's pretty good. It's unlikely for me to use the big long lens, but I carried it up here, so I'm going to take a pigging shot if I have to. And the only downside is everywhere else, beautiful blue skies, everything's looking good. And then of course, where I want that sun to set is a big bank of cloud and it's gone right behind that cloud. It really has. So it's looking quite heavy. So I might not get a shot here, but uh, I'm gonna, I've got about an hour to go till sunset. So I'm gonna cling on in, because actually all I need is a little sort of gap in the sky. And if that sun rays come down, that's brilliant. Cool, can you imagine if they light up the bridge as well? That'd be even better. But I, I think I'm a bit optimistic here because I can see that cloud is quite heavy, I'm afraid. But anyway, I'll take a shot here. Um, just to get a one in the bag. I might go black and white and, uh, and, and see how that works out. So if I don't get a sunset shot, this will be the shot. And if I do get a sunset, this will be the sunset shot. pretty good <sighs> like something a bit better but hey ho i think the key to this and um, the key to the whole video really is is about getting back on the horse and, and getting inspired again and i'm actually sort of buzzing a little bit even though i didn't quite get the sunset shot i wanted um and that's because i've got out it's been a while since i've been out and i've just had a good fun time with the camera and the dog had the drone out got some decent shots uh, and that's what it's all about. So if you get yourself in them doldrums and you just feel a little bit uninspired, then think small. At least I think these my tip is just do a little trek from your house, get out, get your eye in, get your mojo back, uh, and then start putting, building it back up again and going for big sunsets and things like that. I'm glad I've got out. I think I've got a really good shot. So uh, at least one of those images are pretty good. And I had a right variety today, so that's been really good. Thank you so much for watching. As ever, do me a favour, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And if you really like it and you like my content, as usual, go down to the old subscribe button, click on the bell, you'll get a notification every time I post. Uh, thanks so much for watching. And like I say, if you ever come into Balahulis, you want to come and see some of my work, it's in the Balahulis Visitor Centre, which is my business. Um, so you can come on in there. You never know, you might even see me pouring some coffees in there as well. So pop your heads in there, you might see me. Failing that, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I will try and get one a bit quicker than four weeks. Uh, but yeah, this time of year, it's just full on, isn't it? So, uh, so we'll see how we get on. I'm not going to put myself under too much pressure. Thanks for watching and fingers crossed we'll see you in the next video.